So whatever happened to Firefall? I've mentioned the game a couple of times in some of the videos I made, usually referring to games that were a bit like Tabula Rasa. Now that we are in the middle of the looter shooter craze, or at least we were until Battle Royale just snuck up behind them and oh, Anthem's gonna have a hard time. But it was still quite a big craze and still is to a lesser extent. One in which you think that Firefall would have done well, but it was close. Firefall was shut down a little under one year ago. It was made by a studio called Red 5 that was founded by some of the people that actually worked on the original World of Warcraft, like the project lead of World of Warcraft was at the head of this game for a while. And I think the game warrants a bit of a retrospective, not necessarily in the form of a history video, because like it was just last year so it's not really history but is more of a cautionary tale and analysis on just what the hell happened. Firefall also ties into a game that I think I may do a show on, on Dead Games Don't Played, and that game was Project Offset. It's a, um, or it was, a really interesting looking game in terms of technology that was bought out by, well the studio was bought out by Intel when it tried to make a Larrabee, and then decided not to and canned the whole thing, but the technology of that game, Offset Engine, the engine that would just make us lose our minds 10-12 years ago, was licensed to Red 5 for use in Firefall. That was modified, it was not the same engine, it did not go for the same art style, they tried to be a bit more realistic with sub-pixel shading things and stuff that Project Offset had, but it is still the last vestige of Project Offset. The story of Firefall begins oh so many moons ago and it began as a completely different game. The footage you're gonna see on the background is what I have left of my footage from the game. Sadly this is just from the 2014 release version. I had made shows with it since it was released in beta, well, in alpha, and since it was playable in 2011 I believe, but the videos I made are on a service that sucks, so they're not viewable anymore. And I even paid money to be able to upload more than 15 minutes. I would have uploaded them on YouTube, but we made a show back then about World of Warcraft, and Activision decided to go bitch cakes and copyright strike us, so we couldn't upload over 15 minutes even if we wanted to, even if we paid them. We couldn't. Oh, copyright, but back to the, uh, the game at hand. Also, there's some footage from uh, the 2010 trailer, and I believe some of the studio and other stuff that's gonna be associated with the game. The initial idea for the game, and I kid you not, was a World War II fantasy game where Hitler's forces were getting the upper hand by collecting various uh, occult items, and the players would be participants in the war as it was in this version of reality. It was full on PvP. No no PvE to it. But that idea didn't really pan out. So they focus on making it completely sci-fi, with the idea of there being an invasion of Earth that you would have to fight against and fight on the side of. There would be the idea of this thing, this male that took people over, drew them in and corrupted them and depending on which faction you chose, you would fight against the other players. It was again full PvP, it, it was it was more in line with Planet Side than with what Firefall ended up being. But this was all before they actually made a public reveal of the game. This was never publicly revealed up until a couple of years ago when uh, the lead of the project, Mark Kern, revealed this to everybody in a blog post. He wasn't at the studio when he did that, so um, th there were some problems with um, what the project leads wanted to make the game and what the backers of the project wanted. And by backers I don't mean Kickstarter, I mean The Nine, which is a internet gaming company from Shanghai. And it didn't really want that kind of game, it wanted more of a, um, well ironically it is publishing plant site too, so <laughs> It wanted more a World of Warcraft style of affair, more of a traditional type of MMO. Come to think of it, The Nine was also involved with Huxley. Man, remember Huxley? That looked so neat back in the days and it was cancelled. I should do a show about it too, but back to Firefall. When it was pitched to the world, it was supposed to be an evolution of an idea that was being kicked around for quite a while. And it was being kicked around a lot at the time by Tabula Rasa. I probably won't ever stop saying this, but a lot of people have been trying to remake Tabula Rasa or improve upon it in one form or another. Like Double Rasa, Firefall was a game that 
relied on a constant tug of war between you and an alien faction, an invading faction, the Chosen in this case, that was controlled by the AI. It was no longer based entirely on PvP, but I'll get to what they did with PvP soon. But unlike Tabula Rasa, and unlike another game popular back then, at least for me, Heroes of Talara, man, remember Heroes of Talara back before it turned to Rift? It had such an amazing concept, and even the final product is still honestly quite impressive in some ways. And then you had Guild Wars as well, it had events that would happen. This, this wasn't about making a game that had predefined points and predefined times when events would occur, when an invasion would occur, and people could be there and they could stop it and it could reverse what the enemy, the, the, they could take back the territory that the enemy took. The war in this game would not happen like that. The enemy forces would be run by an AI director, like Left 4 Dead. An AI director that existed persistently, one that handled only the enemy troops, one whose objective was to win the war, and players had to fight against that director, against that general, and it would have the ability to send troops of varying shapes and sizes to wherever it saw a weakness in the defenses of the human faction. The human controlled run faction. This wasn't, oh, the Bane took a uh, watchtower again. Yeah, they do it every like 15 minutes. No, this would have been the equivalent of, oh, the Bane have seen that there's nobody in Phoreas because Double Ross had basically no players up until the end and just took everything over and they won. Th that's how the idea worked for, uh, for Firefall, in theory. And this concept was amazing. This concept of a kind of game in which all the players really did try and achieve a common goal, that of beating the game. A PvE on a scale that you don't see in games, like there is no other game like this. There is no comparison. It wasn't about grinding levels until you were strong enough to beat the boss, no. It was about gathering resources so that your faction can build tanks and mobilize armies and gain territory and keep territory and further further encroaching upon the meld, upon the wall of energy that strangles you at every turn until eventually you take back the planet. That's not what we got. That is so far removed from what we got that it's just wowzers. In the end what we got is a ripoff of Tabula Rasa but worse, a watered down version of Tabula Rasa. It had the same classes, it had the exact same classes with the exact same kind of weapons. And for some reason the um, the female engineer class or battle frame or what they called it, and the alpha only had one pant leg, you can see even in the cinematic trailer that she only has one pant leg, but in the final version they, they gave her a functional set of pants, sort of like to show that it's not alpha anymore, here have a full pair of pants. So why didn't we get that? Well, as I've said, the backers of the project wanted something a bit more traditional, something a bit more proven to work, to sell, less ambitious. And also the studio kind of went insane. Red 5 uh, does not exist anymore. It shut down last year, I think. No, actually it shut down two years ago. The game outlived the studio by one year, which is strange, bizarre, and kind of easy to understand. When the game was revealed, it had massive hype behind it. And partially for good reason. I mean, you just heard what, what it was going to be at some point in its development or what the plan was for it to be once upon a time during its development, but not what we got. It had gigantic hype and support for it, the likes of which I've never seen for a game before. And I mean never. Penny Arcade Expo briefly changed its name in 2010, I believe, or the 2011 edition, to Firefall Presents PAX. And it was themed around the giant thumper, which is a mechanism in the game for gathering resources. It was basically a centerpiece of the expo itself. And he had people like uh, the one from Extra Credit making a series of videos about how great Firefall was, how it was pushing the boundaries and stuff, and again, the promise that was made, yeah, I get it. But again, the studio went a bit insane. They made a separate division called Stage 5, which produced content, video content, but it wasn't just about the game, otherwise, you know, it could have just done it through Twitch, which 
which was starting to be a thing back then. No, th this was meant as a television channel that aired on YouTube. And all, all the content on it that is not related to Firefall is now unlisted, but you can still find it embedded in some places. And they did put a lot of effort in it. Like they made an actual television studio with cameras and stuff and scenery and a green room and, you know, things. And they had guests over and they had hosts that did things that were not related to Firefall at all. It, it did serve its purpose, I guess, at making the people aware that Red 5 existed, that Firefall is a thing, though again, Firefall wasn't the focus of the content most of the time. It was general quotation marks nerdy stuff. That's what nerds do in California, I guess. And there's this scene over there. It's, it's internet stuff that's kind of cringy and overproduced and not all that but again besides the point well it is part of the point that i know they had a different budget for for marketing for stage five but kind of wish they put it into the game because uh they didn't have a game they had an idea for a game but apparently no actual way of being able to deliver it like mark karen said that they were able to deliver on the promise of the a director at one point but that never made it into the game instead they decided to turn firefall into an eSport. So the game went from being planet side to being a PvE focused game to then being an eSport where they actually had in 2013 a tournament with prizes that were valued at around 1 million dollars. Then again there was the basic problem that they didn't have a game. I, I played the multiplayer of Firefall, the, the PvP focused one, the small scale team focused Thing that was supposed to be an esport and it wasn't that great. I remember at the time saying that Global Agenda kicks the shit out of it, but they put a lot of effort into making it an esport, into crafting that PvP mode. A lot of effort. Meanwhile, you would be seeing things like the way that the alpha slash beta was evolving, namely it wasn't. When I was playing the game, kind of the only thing you could actually do, the only content that you could do other than walk around, I mean, was you could call a thumper that would drop down and it would pound the ground and extract resources and that would attract enemies around you and they would attack you and you would have to protect the thumper until it finished and then went up and uh, you got the resources. So basically Metal Gear survives the multiplayer PvP thing. The, the, the thing that survive has outside of sort of the co-op. It got boring after the third time you did it and that was the only way you could level in the game in, in the alpha in the beta the thing. And in the forums the developers would say things like oh we are not using cheats to level our characters to pile levels. We're grinding the same way as you guys are grinding in the alpha right now so we can test the, the way the game works. I think it was in reference to the slow progression of the game. And that seemed baffling to me because the game had no content. Why? My god, why are you spending time grinding like this instead of doing something that's going to you know, make the game more appealing, more diverse, broader, more interesting as time goes on instead of just that. And when the final version of the game came, it had more than just it. It had a couple of quests in it that were kind of lame and usually all revolved around the idea of you go to a place, you have to protect that place or be attacked at that place by things and on occasion there is a chosen invasion but not nearly at the the scale that was promised initially and no AI director and basically a watered down version of what we got in Rift, Plains of Talara. I wouldn't say it was even at the same level as Tabula Rasa's, which is kind of sad. But after a while, I mean before release, th they finally came around to the idea that, oh, maybe trying to make this an eSport was a bad idea because they didn't have a game yet. There was an idea for a game, but that never got implemented. So they dropped the idea for the eSport component, for the PvP entirely, actually. They removed it completely. And I thought then that, okay, they're refocusing, they're trying to make this what they promise it would be and people started getting fired and stage five shut down and you sort of got it like into your head that maybe things weren't going well even the lead like mark kern got fired before the game was released and it came out in 2014 and nobody cared four years earlier the game had massive hype behind it. like i said massive hype it was everywhere they pushed it everywhere they could and again a lot of the western seaboard of america kind of crowd was really into it like they knew the right people to go to, to to push the game out there but it didn't get really any traction on a kind of there not being much to the game not when we had rift planes of talara when we had guild wars 2 which was already released the only thing that really set 
fire fall apart, back then is that there was always the promise of it being free. Always. That attracted at first a lot of people, but there were problems with how do we implement demonetization. They never really managed to do it in such a way that it is actually good. Because what I ended up with was they were selling power directly, basically. Which kind of undermined the entire point of the initial game, that of you having to cooperate with other people to make an army to fight against the darkness. And that was grind, 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 pay, okay, grind, less, grind, less, get max level and then nothing. Because even though you're gaining levels and increasing your character's power, the game never really increased in its scope. The idea with the thumpers was that, oh yeah, the first one you have is a little dingy thing that you have to protect like by yourself or maybe with a friend or two or some randos because there was no instant stuff. It had the, you know, the, the common public quest system that was really popular a while ago when people decided that oh instances are kind of crap we have the uh, the processing power of the service to do things together now well the idea was that you would be rid of that little thumper like pretty soon you would be going to larger thumpers you would have building sized thumpers that required armies of players to defend and you didn't grind those resources just for yourself no you grinded those resources to build tanks for your faction to build planes to build dropships to sustain a war effort you would actually see results in the world from your grind if it was actually rewardful like if it was actually something that required effort and you could see a tangible effect of it i wouldn't call it grind i would call it just a game i'm playing it but that progression never happened that escalation that increase of scope that never happened in the game it was stuck still on the alpha version of the gameplay loop a boring boring aspect of a game that could have been so good so great but it never was internal conflicts were one of the main reasons why the game failed so miserably the leads wanted one game the studio wanted a different game the backers wanted another game in the end what we got was a cautionary tale that that if you're going to promise the sun and the moon at least try and deliver bits of the sun and the moon not suddenly realize oh you actually just want to make cheese instead if you have your own stories about firefall make sure to mention them in the comments i'm curious to see what your take on its evolution was especially if you were a player that actually stuck with it for years and then drop it on account of it was so goddamn boring goodbye okay,